Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for May 8th, 2013. I'm Matt Gradwall from UppercutWoodworks.com. You can find me on the web, at uh, on Twitter, at UppercutWood. And if you're um, watching the video and you want to jump into the chat, head over to UppercutWoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room. My camera is not working with Google Plus right now, so I am the ventriloquist Chris. And now we will introduce Chris, and he will use his own voice. All right, I guess that's my cue. I was trying to move my lips to make it look like I was talking instead of Matt, but uh, this is my voice you're hearing now. Um, I'm Chris Wong from Flare Woodworks. You can follow me on Twitter at Flare Woodworks, and check out my website and blog at flarewoodworks.com. So, Chris, tonight's topic was suggested by Adam Weil, wasn't it? Yes, that's correct. And Setting up shop and organizing. It's yeah, and storage solutions. Storage, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so you sent a picture of your shop. Ack, I did too. Let me find that picture. Wow. So, um, just two minutes ago, I took a picture and... Let's see if I can make it nice and big so you can see it. So yeah. this is this is my bench room at present. Oh, perfect. At, yeah, you've got it there. Yeah, okay. I can screen share. I just can't get on camera. So there it is. Perfect. Yeah. So um, that's that big um, bench-looking things kind of serves as a shelf. Um, I put stuff on it. You can see my sharpening stones at the very right side of that picture. Right this here. whole thing's in mirror image. It didn't switch. I don't know why. Um, but let's start at the bottom here. I'll show you what I have. So uh, this bench is eight feet long. And at the bottom, I've got little divided sections. Um, I used to store shorts of wood in there, but not, a, not any longer. Um, I just have odd stuff in there. Um, I've got little organizational containers and cans of uh, end grain sealer and scrap wood and other things at the bottom. Mm -hmm. and it's that shelf above that gets the most use. These so, ones here? Uh, yeah. So in, in the foreground, um, you can see a sustainer and a, on a pull-out tray. And that's where I have all my festival stuff there. I've got my two domino joiners and my jigsaw in next to the sustainer. I've got my dominoes inside that sustainer and long um, uncut ones behind there. So that tray that trays on full extension slides and it just pulls so I don't want need to get mm -hmm. to something and it keeps it really organized. What I've done is I've taken the, when you buy a, a Festool you get it in a sustainer and there's a black plastic tray in the bottom to organize all the parts. And what I did is I took out that tray and I set it right on this uh, pull out here to organize the things without having to open up the sustainer lid, which I find, um, I don't know, it's one more step, which I don't need. Mm -hmm. So that one tray organizes those items there. And on top I have another sliding tray, and I've got rolls of chisels on there. So my bench chisels, mortising chisels, carving chisels, and I've got some assorted things on the side here, a pocket hole tray do again. A, do I see a new concepts fret saw on there? You probably see, if you look closely, you'll see uh, a five-inch fret saw, an eight-inch fret saw, and a coping saw. Okay. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, in, they're in there as well on this uh, tray with the chisels. Okay. Now, on the left of that, um, it's dark there, but um, there's a metal drawer unit, which I salvaged from, I can't remember where I got that from, but there's a whole bunch of drawers. There's... Um, a bank of six drawers across, two high, and there's one extending out. And on top of that, I put a layer of um, cork, which I bought from um, a, a store called Windsor Plywood. And on top of that, I have my bench planes. Okay, so they're not, um, in, the, most they're not in the plane rack that's hanging on the wall. No, uh, that was too far away, I found. Um, okay. The plane... The, most of my planning I do is on this bench at the very far left of the picture. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a taller bench. It's not really the best for planning, but it, it's free. Um, 
as in it's clear most of the time, and it has a vice on it. So that is what I use most of the time when I am, that's, that's where I work, on that, that bench there. Mm -hmm. So this is a closer station for that. I've got my planes there. Um, if you have any questions, you can drop them into, into Twitter just using the hashtag woodchat, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, to the left of the hand planes, there's a little shelf protruding from the bench. And that's one of the ones that I made. Um, it's got a big tusk tenon through the middle. I, we talked about that in WoodChat maybe uh, four months ago, maybe more. Um, so that protrudes about two feet into the room. And I found that it's really handy for putting small stuff that I'm using at the bench, but I don't want on top of the bench. So I guess in a way, it's kind of like my tool tray. Um, I usually have a, a saddle square on there, um, um, a pencil and uh, maybe a chisel and any screws that I'm using at the time and just small little bits that I don't want to have on the bench top and it just lifts off, it's on a, on a bracket just drops on when I want it on or it lifts off when I don't want it so it's really really easy to, it's, it's practical. Yeah. So the top of the bench you can see is just stuff, project parts for various projects and it's not a whole lot of junk on there, but there's uh, there is some stuff that can disappear. What is this um, unit here, right by the power, the breaker panel? You see my mouse. Um, right, right below there. Yeah, I can look at where my mouse is in the feed, in the hangout. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for that. So the breaker panel is at the very top there. You can see that, and there's a lamp next to it. That is a storage, that is a cabinet that I built to hold uh, storage cases and um, I can find that picture. Um, there's a picture uh, top my Your audio is cutting out, bud. Okay. I got a lot of questions about that there. It's, it's a plywood cabinet that holds uh, little divider boxes that I use to organize things. Okay. So for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, <coughs> Mark, um, we are talking about shop organization and storage socials today. So I'm showing my shop here on the other screen on map screen and we are, I'm explaining what is there. Okay, so on the wall um, I've got cabinets above and they go right up to the ceiling, and I've got a power bar that's this uh, metallic, uh, metallic thing with black, two black little squares on it that's attached to the bottom of that cabinet. And that's got plugs every six inches or something along that, so I can plug in smaller tools like that. Uh, below that, I have my no longer used uh, plane rack, um, a cabinet with three pull-out trays for my marking and measuring tools. I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And uh, to the left of that in the picture, there is a, a metal tool cabinet with red plastic trays for to use to store blades and um, pencils and other small stuff. And to the right, there's a small shelf that I keep my glues on. Okay. And in the uh, picture, did you find that picture? picture from that shelf is, in the picture, your glue shelf is to the left of the red. Trays. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in the picture to the right of the plane till that you're not using, there's a smoky plastic thing. What's that? Look in the hangout. You can see how okay. I'm Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, way over there? Mm hmm where, where your mouse is, that's a, uh, a scraper roll, a, a Lee Valley scraper roll with card scrapers in it. Gotcha, okay. Okay, gotcha. Cool. And you can see that I've got a couple of the white lamps articulating and magnifying too. They're, they're really good. And they have, mag like they have magnifiers can... on? Yeah, I don't use the mag magnification very much, but I like how I can control the direction of light. Yeah. Um, when I'm working at the bench, especially into the night. I like to turn off the overhead lights and just use that single point light. Yeah. Yeah. 
I just ordered two of those. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. From Vic Hubbard gave you a great link. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Mine I don't think mine magnify. Okay. Yeah. I don't find it I can probably count on two fingers the times I've used that magnification yeah. feature. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go get a tray and show you how I organize my marking tools. Okay. Chris, did you see uh, Dale's studio picture of this up? Yeah, yeah, I did. It's beautiful. He's got carpet nice in there. Nice space, yeah, carpeted, carpeted floors, yeah. And, yeah. Um, here's the picture. Here, so. This picture here um, shows that plastic storage cabinet a little bit better and shows the bench from a different angle. Gotcha. So, oh, I've got a magnetic toolbar um, hanging from that cabinet as well. And I've got saws and chisels and screwdrivers hanging from that. So. Where's the magnet? Oh, yes, to the, to the, right near your head in the picture there. Right near my head, yeah, at, at eye level for me. Gotcha. Okay. Let's get out of here. Looks like Adam Weil has a brand new uh, metal building for his shop. Looks nice. Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool to have a new. A clean um, Adam, closet. Adam, do you plan on um, insulating the walls as well? I think insulation would be good. I don't I don't know if you get condensation issues in the in a building like that or. <laughs> I've got a tool tray to show you here in a second. You could, you could get condensation, but um, those metal buildings are so common now that people know how to do the right air flow build. and all that uh, stuff. Okay. So they're yeah. pretty good. Uh, Pete commented that he covered the walls in his basement shop with OSB, and that it's nice to be able to hang things anywhere, and that, that that's a really good point. Um, yeah. Instead of having to find a stud, you just drive a screw wherever you like and hang, hang your French cleat or hang whatever. Yeah, it is nice. You can also um, no more drywall anchors. Whatever you want to hang yeah, goes yeah. wherever. And, and if you, you need can, to do electrical and conduit on the outside, you don't have to try and screw it yep. studs or anything. Yeah, then that you don't have to worry about putting a screw through the wall, through the drywall, and then hitting a wire behind because you can see it yeah. on the front. Yeah. So this is a tray, one of the tool trays from the the cabinet by marking tools. I think I can angle it up enough. Yeah, so did you fresh so, those into there? Um, kind of. What it is, I've got 3 8 inch plywood, undersized 3 8 mm -hmm. So it, you can see it from the side here. Um, that'll ride in a 3 8 inch uh, dado in the, in the cabinet side. And what mm -hmm. I've done is I've taken that quarter inch cork again, the same stuff I used under my planes, and mm -hmm. I used contact cement to adhere it to that piece of plywood. Mm-hmm. And then I took each of my tools and I traced around it, and then I used a just a, a utility knife to trace around it, and then cut down to the plywood, and then I just pulled out the the center bit. Right. So I have one for my double square, one for my combination square, and I did this for all the tools in the cabinet there. So the bonus is that they don't roll around when you pull the uh, the trays open and closed. Mm -hmm. And um, for the handle, I just I shaped a piece of cherry, and I used uh, hot high glue to attach it. Gotcha. Just a, a rub joint. 
feel like a waiter right now. <laughs> I like how you I like how you French French the tools in partially though. Yeah, to them, to and them sliding and rolling and stuff like that. Yeah, and it protects them, and it's really quick as well. Yeah. Um, French doing um, French fitting can be a slow process, especially if you go go all the way and uh, flock it or whatever. Um, this is, this was really quick, and like yeah, I could probably make one in ten minutes. Yeah. Let me put this put some back here. What's going on with the audio? Sorry, what was that? Oh, the audio was kind of awkward there for a second. It sounded like somebody would somebody had joined the uh, hangout. Okay, I unplugged my headphones. I don't know if that got gotcha. to do with it. Okay, so. For Pete, Electrical Conduit is his next project and it's playing the ceiling um, to mostly to dampen sound um, because he's in the basement there. That is good. I don't have any insulation in my ceiling. Um, it's actually filled with wood. Yeah. Um, I, I've got uh, exposed rafters and I've where I can I put plywood between the rafters only a foot or a two foot wide strip and then I put shorts of wood up on top of there. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people who store wood in their rafters like that. Matter of fact, Steve Ramsey, Mere Mortals Woodworking, just went through a whole bunch of uh, organization and storage projects, and he was showing how he stores the wood in his rafters that way. Yeah, I've got all kinds of partially completed projects out there too and prototypes, and kind of makes an interesting ceiling to, ceiling to look at, but um, it's a good thing I'm not too tall. I've got a friend who's really tall, and... Yeah. He doesn't like my shot very much. That would be a head bumper. Yeah. So, question for you, Chris. When you store your planes and your chisels like that, do you have rust problems? No, I'm actually I'm actually really good for rust problems. I live about it's only a ten minute walk down to the down to the ocean. Yeah. But I don't have any rust issues at all. Um um, unless I introduce water myself. Okay, um, so do you yeah, rub your? Strange. Do you rub down your um, tools with a woobie? No, um, I use uh, bow shield, maybe every nine months or something, or when I think about it, not very often at all. Um, on my machinery, I like to do um, bow shield and then paste wax every six months is my routine for doing uh, full maintenance on the tools, but. Um, I'm not very good at sticking to that. I do it at least once a year, clean them out and lubricate parts and um, bow shield and paste wax, but I'm not very, I don't do it on a very regular basis at all. Gotcha. Gotcha, okay. Um, I had some restored planes uh, in plane socks, and I still had a bit of spotting. Hmm. And they had been rubbed down with they had been rubbed down with oil, so I was pretty I was pretty frustrated. Um, there was a plane that I bought in Phoenix last time I was down. Um, it was a a Wood River number no. five, and um, I opened it out of the package there. I I can't remember if it was covered in grease or anything, but I, anyways, I cleaned it up if it did, and it came back as spare metal. And I found that when I opened it up here. Um, there's rust on the sole. So I guess somewhere between Phoenix and my opening up back here in Port Moody in Vancouver, um, it c gathered some condensation or something and it, it uh, caused surface rust on the sole. Yeah. I'm surprised at that. I ended up getting some of those rust erasers, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah those, are, those are great. Um, I think I used... Um, Auto saw polish, I think, on it, trying to bring back some of the polish, and it worked. Um, it worked all right. I can show you what it looks like if you like. Sure. Before you do that, a couple questions for you yep. that um, I think are going to help um, 
at him really quick as he, you know, he's starting with a blank slate. Yep. What are you doing for heating or cooling, uh, okay. electrical and lighting? Um, heating and cooling, I put on a jacket or take it off. Um, okay. I just suck it up, really. Um, for lighting, I've got, uh, it's not great, I've got three, three sets of uh, double fluorescence four-footers, T8s mm -hmm. in my shot in each side of my bedroom and um, machine shop. But what I, um, in my machine shop, I've got a pair of big barn doors with a seven by seven foot opening, and they face south. So when I'm working in there and the weather is not raining, I just open the doors and it lets in a lot of light. Yeah. Um, during so the day, I actually don't even turn the lights on. For your machines. Yep. Um, it's behind the glass door you saw behind the bench in that picture I showed from Tom's okay. site. Okay. Um, so that's lighting, heating, and uh, what was your other question? Electrical. Yeah. I've yeah I've got, I've got the sub panel there, and I'm able to uh, supply the power that I need through that. I don't know any specs for that, so. Okay. I don't know. It has white it has white cables coming out of it, and they go to power boxes. <laughs> you had that done, or was that done when you moved into the house? I, I had it done. Gotcha. Cool. Um, and Dale says. Did you just Dale say, says. Oh. Go ahead. What? Go ahead. Oh, I was reading Dale's comment. You can go ahead, though. Um, when you did your fluorescent lighting, did you worry about flicker, color, all that stuff? No. You just got. Cheap yeah, I just. Fluorescent lights. Got them and put them in. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm not too concerned with, with that. Oh, here's a good idea from Second Wind. Um, yep. When you get those silica gel packs that come with products, yep. he keeps them and throws them in with his planes. Yep, you can do that as long as your planes are, are in an enclosed space. Otherwise, it doesn't do much good. Yeah, it's just going to suck all the... Humidity out of the air. Yeah, and you can buy that stuff too, of course. But uh, yeah, they have those. They have getting, a product called Dry, is better. Dry Z Air. Yep. Yeah. Um, find that for people who understand what that is. But yeah, it's a um, uh, it's a desiccant basically. Yeah, silica desiccant. Yeah. And. Um, for lumber storage, that's another, another issue. Um, Pete, Pete said that he's got uh, several of the metal racks from Sam's. I don't know. It's, I don't know what Sam's. Sam's is like Walmart or something. I think. Sam's Club, I think, is kind of like Costco. Costco. Okay. We don't mm -hmm. have them up, up in Canada here. Um, he got several of the metal racks from Sam's for lumber storage. Uh, his ceiling is too low for, for wood storage. He says. Um, in my shop, I can show you over here, I think. Here we go. So in that corner, I've got, um, I stand my, my lumber, my dry lumber up on end. So it's standing, if it's a six foot board, it stands six feet in the air. And I've got the edge against uh, the wall, so I can pick through it quite easily, and uh, find the board I want, or look look at it, look through it. Um, other lumber I store. You don't you don't store um, it flat, so it won't twist. Uh, no, this stuff's dry anyhow. I don't think it's going to move a whole lot more. I don't think it's going to twist. Okay. Um, once it's dry, when I am drying it, I do store it flat though. Either on, um, when I first get it, I get my lumber green. So when I first get it, store it on uh, pallets outdoors, and with uh, three quarter inch stickers, so it is evenly supported every every foot or sixty inch, sixteen inches or so, and uh, make sure those are spaced uh, regularly and also evenly all the way up across up through your stack, so you don't have a sticker here, then a sticker over here, then over here. You want mm -hmm. them all in line with with each other. Um, so when I'm drying the lumber, I use uh, stickers. And I just cover the top um, to keep uh, water off them, and I leave the the sides open so 
it gets gets good airflow through them through the stack. And afterwards, I'll bring it inside into my machine room um, where it's not heated or cooled, and uh, put it on a, on wood racks that I've built. Gotcha. Okay, so you you really haven't had any problems with sagging or on or bending on the boards. Your yeah. shop must stay pretty dry then. I don't regulate it. Um, maybe it does. I don't know. Gotcha. Well, it looks like Adam. Casey, figured out. I'm... What's that? Well, in case you haven't figured out, I'm not too. I'm not too big on the on this on the specs. Getting everything. Yeah. Not too big on having numbers. And I, and... I mean, my my shop is my garage. And it's uh, I've got a wood rack on the on the wall up high, one of those beefy wood racks. That's mostly to keep the lumber off the floor. But you know, I'm in Seattle. If I open the garage door, a bunch of moisture rushes in. Mm-hmm. So my my garage is insulated and he- heated with a gas stove, so it gets a very dry heat. Um, and I really haven't had too many problems, so. Looks like Adam's new shop is 460 square feet, which is that's pretty nice. Wow, Dale put up pictures of his old shop. That is pretty much my dream shop, Dale. Can you pack that up and ship it to me? It's beautiful. Holy smokes, wooden floor. High ceilings, mm. big posts, big beams. Let's put that in the feed here. How, how big is your shop, uh, Matt? Mine's a three-car garage. And do you get do you get all of it? Well, I get I get one stall permanently. Okay. Or maybe one and a half stalls permanently. And then when I do big projects, I pull the car out, and uh, most of my stuff's on mobile basis. So I can spread okay. out. Now, if I'm if I'm working on a small project, I don't need to do anything. But yep. if I'm working on a big project, I I pull the wife's car out, tell her she can't park in there. I actually pull the little red string on the garage door opener so that if she hits the garage door opener, it won't open. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I spread things out. Yeah. Um, and I also spray in there. I have a portable spray booth that I spray in there. Yeah. Having it insulated and heated, and then I and I have like nine. Eight foot long, two tube fixtures. So when I'm in there at night and I flip on those lights, it is like a bright, bright, bright sunny day in there. Um, okay. So all right, I'm gonna put Dale's shop pictures on there. How big is your shop, Matt? Or no, sorry, not. I, did, I asked you that. Um, what was I gonna ask you? I was gonna say that's about 600 square feet, then, right? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more like 20 by 40. Um, That'd be 600. Yeah. Uh, 20 by 40. Do the math. So, Do the math. Uh, <laughs> Dale said that shop is 3,000 feet, the one that you're showing right now. Yeah. So and would you 20 like a 3,000? 40 is really 800. Okay. Um, so, here, so, yeah, the Dale shop is, is beautiful, but that's... Three thousand square feet. I would. I would love that. I would. I would love that. Yeah. I'd put a bed in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the wood floor is very appealing because it's flat, mm-hmm. and it's better than concrete. You know, when you're when you're woodworking in a garage, a garage in, automatically by code has a sloping floor, which is a pain in the butt. Um, it looks like his tools are set up spaced far enough apart where they're not bumping into each other and he doesn't have to move them around. So he can kind of set them up permanently and build permanent outfeed tables. Um, yeah. Dale, what, would you send that back? Just send that to me. He's got a good hand tool area in the back here with a lamp on it. He's got a yeah. lathe and all kinds of stuff. This is just a beautiful shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, Dale's last comment um, actually makes has a lot of, of 
Well, it's an interesting comment. Um, he says um, in his new shop, which is 200 square feet versus 3,000, um, he's now rent-free. Mm -hmm. He was renting the other shop for 750 a month, which is ridiculously yeah. cheap, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, but still, rent-free is awesome, and that's why he converted to the smaller shop. And also, he doesn't work with plywood anymore. He what? He what? He's not working. He does with not work with plywood anymore. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. So you obviously need a lot of space. You need you generally you want to have more space when you're working with plywood. Yeah. And um, well, slabs kind of dictate that as well, but um, breaking down a slab is usually done with um, portable tools going to the wood rather than bringing the oh, yeah. material to. And and that's the way I break down plywood is with um, a straight edge and a circular saw. I throw a piece of uh, okay. insulating foam on the ground and put the plywood on that and do it on the ground. Yeah. 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 Adam's thinking of putting a loftish space on the shop side yeah. for space, but not sure how to get how to cheaply get beams strong enough. Adam. Look into recycled building supplies. Um, find a Habitat for Humanity store or something like that. There's a there's places like that in Seattle, and they have great old um, beams. Here I'll find you. I'll find you a link to a place in um, Seattle. There's one called Second Use in Seattle. And they have great big beams and posts and things like that. Um, the old shop had a freight elevator. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. Oh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, having a walkout basement like Pete has, and I've kind of my my half my shop where I am right now, the bench room. This is technically the basement. And the machine shop is attached, but it's not part of the basement, and that's a walkout as well. So, like I said, the south-facing uh, barn doors, and it's a level yard too, so I can work out there when I'm uh, doing a lot of rough work or making a mess, or um, when it's just nice weather. So I'll often do my turning and my carving out there. Um, mm -hmm. When I'm flattening a big slab using a, a power planer, I'll go out there and do that and cover the yard with the chips, break them up. Yeah. yeah. Chris, have you ever used any recycled building materials? Gone Not or very or much. I've, I've got some dug fur that came from a trestle bridge, a railway, a railway trestle bridge, but other mm -hmm. than that, uh, no. So there's a great, uh, let me get the link, there's a great place in Washington where <laughs> Uh, when old buildings get taken down, like old breweries, pulp mills, and things like that, they get a lot of that, um, a lot of that old lumber. They obviously have to remove any metal. Sometimes they have to deal with um, uh, paint, and it might be lead paint, right? But they clean it up and they make. Uh, panels, um, and they make bench tops, and they make countertops, and they make cladding, and so let me, um, let me send, send everybody this link, but, um, so if I was to do, if I was to do a large assembly table or bench, I would probably just buy one of theirs instead of making my own laminated top. <laughs> Flooring and big tabletops. Yeah, there's a company in the area that there's a few that do that. Actually, probably a lot of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, most of them are just storm falling, wind falling, whatever you want to call it. Or and that includes uh, trees that are taken down for demos. And I was just at a site uh, just before now, um, looking at an apple tree, 
and trying to determine if I can pull anything from that. Um. Yeah. When when you see reclaimed, does we re, does reclaimed to you mean it's already been processed and used as wood somewhere in some kind of installation or furniture or uh, frame or what have you? Or can we claim B from a tree on a property, or is that not reclaimed? No. So when I when I think of reclaimed, I think of it's it's already been harvested, milled, and used in something, yeah. and now that something is being torn down, and instead of that wood being sent to the chipper, mm -hmm. somebody salvaged it. When I think of the second example, which is repurposed, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think of the second example, um. For instance, um, uh, somebody has a old tree that falls down in a storm. Typically, uh, a lot of times they call that urban urban logging, right? Um, uh, and there's a I wish I could remember the link, but there's a guy in Seattle who does a great job uh, building furniture out of. Um, trees that he basically gets from arborists or the city or the county. Yeah, yeah. So no, my my local my local contact um, who does the milling for me, he's got uh, he's in with all the tree companies, so they give him a call when whenever they're bringing down a big tree that they think he might be interested in, then he 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 calls me and says, "Hey, Chris, you want this or not?" And, I say yes or no. Usually, yeah, yes. But yeah, yeah. It's 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 about uh, who you know. You have to have to have the contacts to get the to get what you want. And often there isn't a whole lot of time to act on this stuff because if it's being demoed or something, they'll, they'll waste they'll waste the tree if um, if nobody says they want it. They'll chop into firewood lengths or load it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, it depends on the species, though, too. There's a lot of, yeah. a lot of fur that comes down around here, and I'm, I love fur, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking for other things, really. Mm, yeah, I, I'm not too, not too keen on the softwoods. Yeah. Softer woods, I should say. Yeah. Let's see. I think I found the guy Ty. But I don't think I think this has got to be his. Um, yep, this is it. So this is another guy who is connected with the tree service. Got some wood for me now. They just started doing this recently, so he's got he's drawing some stuff out for me now. But. Mountain View Works. Okay. Yeah, so he's affiliated with. Um, a local tree service, and um, huh. yeah, and so they. It's quite the view, yes. Yeah, that's called Mount Sai. That's a that's a mountain, but okay. But he's got pictures of them milling up cedar and things like that. So here's the the picture from his website here. Yeah, that's so Mount Sai. Nice and header. Nice header, and jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mount Sai green fields in Washington. Yeah, ground uh, green fields and um, some kind of uh, cattle or here maybe, and then yep. Mount Sai. That that mountain's maybe I don't know half an hour for me, twenty minutes for me, mm -hmm. um, out towards Snoqualmie, Washington. So, <laughs> but they so they're doing the full the full service. What's that? They're doing the full the full service. They're they fall the tree and then mill them, dry them, and then build build your project, build your dresser or cabinet, as they say here. Yep. And if you look on the uh, custom milling and kiln drying page, they've got um, a wood miser LT forty. Okay. Um, And all the trees they use were were trees that customers asked them to remove, or yep. trees that came down because of a um, 
the storm. Yeah, that looks like a pretty, pretty, pretty big uh, wood miser. Yeah. Some of those are They'll pretty. Point uh, out that you can find guys through the arborist site, and then yeah. some of the companies that make and sell mills mm -hmm. have directories on their site, so you can find those guys. They'll yeah. find um, who owns mills in your area. So yeah. Now, I'd love it if when they had a big um, log like they're showing on their milling page, you know, that they'd make me some uh, parts for a big bench. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Be, that'd be that'd be pretty beautiful, I think, to get something like that. But, but it looks like they it looks like they do a lot of um, a lot of people are on here to use cedar, uh, green cedar from these logs for fences, um, and then they they put them up, put up the wood green, build the fence green. They don't wait for it to dry, so. Okay. Is that relying on some of those chair building principles where the mortise shrinks and locks in the tenon? I just think that they're just doing it for the for the cheapness. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they have they actually have a lot of problems where if they put two nails if they nail a um, a piece of the fencing onto the piece of the structure with two nails as the cedar dries, yeah. it'll split. So, yeah, yeah. So that's back to the basics of uh, wood movement. So as it dries, it shrinks, and if you drive your two nails uh, five inches apart, it won't allow the ba the board to shrink. So yep. what it'll do is either it'll break the nails, which won't happen in most cases anyhow, yeah. or it'll mm -hmm. open up a split down the middle of your board. Yeah, it'll split. So, with it'll split. Yeah, so if you do use two nails, put them close together uh, an inch apart or so. And yep. I guess the purpose of the two nails is to hold it flat, right? To try and keep it flat? That's what they're trying to do. Some guys use staples, but the staples, okay. the staples don't hold. So. Yeah. Um, shiplap would be the, the traditional method, right? Because the one holds the next one down? Yeah. Um, but you know these are these are commodity cheap fence builders. They're not. Yeah. They're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You you're not really using plywood these days, or sheet goods. Um, no. Um, I use sheet goods for cabinets in the shop, like that. The uh, marking to marking tools cabinet that I showed you earlier. Um, I've got mm -hmm. a couple rolling carts in here. Um, I, don't, I don't have a whole lot of use for plywood and sheet goods. Maybe jigs would be the only thing I use it for. I do like my quarter-inch MDF for templates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, I, I can't think of much else use that I have for it. It's kind of a commodity, so I save every scrap that I have of it, unfortunately. Yeah. I've been, I've been working on... Um, a design I haven't looked at in a while where for a sheet goods rack on one side it's sheet goods storage and on the other side it is clamp storage. Mm, okay. Because um, I'd like to get my clamps off my wall so I could put cabinets on my wall. Okay, yeah. I've got some of my clamps um, up above the doorway on a, on a rack there. Um, and I've got other ones just around the shop leaning against, leaning against walls, so um, it works for me so far. Gotcha. Yeah, looking, at, looking at my, my shop here, I notice that I have a whole cabinet full of stickers. <laughs> um, stickers for wood drying, of course. Um, right. I don't know, I probably have over 200 of them there. I can never have enough. When I first met my, my wood guy, he said, um, so here's what you do, Chris. You, you go get some wood, some three-quarter inch material, and you cut a whole bunch of stickers, as many as you think you need, and then cut some more. <laughs> because you really do go through them. Yeah. 
Do you sticker the ends and the middle? Yeah, um, uh, I put the put the stickers intermittently throughout. First one maybe two or three inches from the end of a board, and then every foot or so, foot to sixteen inches from then on in. Okay. And I just use a three quarter inch by three quarter inch material. Um, you want something that won't stain, something without tannins in it or oils. Um, um, uh, cedar, red cedar would be a poor choice. You might get um, might might cause staining. Um, I've just been using for I was building up my collection um, when I needed them in a hurry. I'd go down to the home center and buy a one by two, a whole bunch of one by twos and rip, rip them in half. Gotcha. So I'd get that whatever it is spruce or I think they're spruce. Um, get a whole bunch of those three three quarter inch square or close enough and. Um, They've served me well. Cool. They're kind of expensive when you do it that way, but um, it's probably be better to save all your three-quarter inch scraps when you get them and uh, cut them up. Yeah, yeah. I know people that have also used. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what their what the um, purpose was, but um, dowel rod. And I, I think that would be frustrating. It probably roll all over. Okay. But, I don't know why. Yeah, um, the, the, the benefit of dowel is that three quarter inch um, surface contact on each, on each side. Um, the idea of the dowel is to minimize um, the surface contact. Yeah. Does that make it, sense? Yeah. It's, it, it, it actually makes contact with much less of the surface than a three quarter by three quarter. Yeah. yeah. Um, it would roll all over the place and the hell out of me. Um, I'm trying to find what I'm looking for here. It's not. It's taking me somewhere somewhere else. You'll, you'll understand when I explain. Um, a lot of the pro, uh, a lot of the pro shops. What they'll do, the guys who dry wood mm -hmm. commercially, they've got. Um, it's basically. I think they're basically a three quarter inch profile, maybe a one inch profile square, but instead of having flat sides, they're con cave on each face so that it's, it's shaped like a dog bone. I think they're called dog bone stickers but when I type dog bone stickers I get stickers that stickers of dog bones. Yeah. Um, but anyways that, that that gives it just four points of contact and of course they, they don't roll. Yeah. I would maybe yeah, do well, I'm gonna somebody, um, that. Or, or I would do three quarter by three quarter and then nip off the corners to create octagon shape. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, you could you could do that. Um, the other thing I've had success with is cove molding. That'll be uh, yeah. three points of contact, right? Yeah. So you lay your cove flat down so it stays, doesn't roll, and then uh, your lumber goes on the other side. Yeah. You've got, got a challenge for all you wood chatters. Um, Go online and try and find a picture of that dog bone profile sticker that I was talking about. Um, I don't, I, I'm not having any luck here at all. I'm getting all kinds of um, dog stuff. Well, yeah. So, second one so is asking if those um, three quarter inch ply stickers, about a quarter inch. Thick are too thin. I, I just don't. Is a quarter inch. Yeah. Um, when I'm drying lumber, I like three quarter inch. Um, one inch would probably be better, but it does make your stack taller in a hurry. Mm -hmm. um, so three quarter inch works fine for me, and also I have lots of three quarter inch material that I can find. Um, plywood works well as well. I've found. Um, I don't know if any of the glues would. Uh, see how they get wet or cause any issues with that. Um, I haven't experienced that so far. Mm -hmm. um, inside the shop, once I have the wood dry, say I I resaw it and I just want to uh, let it settle on the shop, I usually use um, three eighth inch stickers. Again, that's three eighth inch. Um, this is a, these are three eighth inch plywood um, strips that I've cut up, and that's what I use for stickering just to keep uh, the airflow uniform. Uh, between mm -hmm. the between the wood. 
Yeah, I'm, ha I'm not having luck finding a picture of what you wanted me to find a picture of. So. Yeah. Um, quarter inches, quarter inch is probably a little bit thin to me, but it would probably be do probably do fine if you aren't drawing the wood. If you're just trying to get air airflow through there, um, yeah, quarter if you're inch would probably. it might be fine, but if you need to dry it, I think I, th yeah, I just you want some more airflow between there. Cool. Well, Chris, we are beyond time, and I have to get running. So All right, family, lunch time for me here. Family would, will still like me, so. Okay. Sign off. All right. I think that was good. Um, I hope Adam would give you some good ideas, and um, thank you, Dale, for contributing, and thanks to everyone for hanging out with us here. Yeah. Hey, we'd love for you to tweet uh, throughout the week using the wood chat hashtag. Let us know what topics or guests you'd like us to yes. uh, cover. Um, we really want to get into a pattern of announcing the topic. Um, not a couple of hours before WoodChat, but a couple of days or, or or maybe a week yeah. before WoodChat, so that we can um, get more pre uh, prepared and have more guests. And then also we'll find those dog bone stickers. Yeah, find those dog bone stickers. It's also been a while since we had a design jam, so I think we're going to have one of those coming up. I have a sewing cabinet yes. um, and some other uh, designs I'd like to share with WoodChat. So. Um, you know, it's 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 been a while, and if you've got something you've been working on, um, you know, show it show it off with WoodChat, and um, we can we can help you out. So, so are you thinking next week, Matt, for Design Jam? What do you think, Chris? Should we do it? Um, I've got a project here on the bench that's almost done. It should be ready for next week. So yeah, let's do it next week. Cool. I will have a project that's ready to show that um, in SketchUp. So I'll screen okay. share and show it and sketch up. Sure. Um, so if, it, if anybody else has a project that is either in sketch phase or middle of build phase or completed phase, um, we'd like to see pictures of it. And if you're open to having some critique and comments, and maybe if or, you have a problem, if you just have a solve, problem you're trying to solve. Yes. So. We want to know about it. Yeah, we'll try and help you. So. Yeah. Okay, well, that is Wood Chat for May 8th, 2013. Again, I am the hidden man without video this week. Matt Gradwall from Uppercut Woodworks. We do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern. You can tweet with the hashtag Wood Chat anytime, and one of the wonderful Wood Chat participants um, will help you out. Um, if you want to participate in the Design Jam last, next week, let us know. Get some pictures ready or some sketches ready or video ready or whatever and uh, let us know what problem you're trying to solve or what what design aspects you want input on so um, so I'm Matt Gravel and I'm signing off Chris all right Chris Wong here from Flay Woodworks I'd like to say thank you to Jamie who's woken up at 3 a.m. it's now 4 a.m. in the UK where he is thanks for tuning in to WoodChat and we will see you all next week right on thanks everybody bye bye